Mr. Speaker, I come from Malaysia where it's a mandatory treatment of imprisonment for those who have drug possession and those who traffic drugs. It is to my abject horror that I, as a law student, when visiting these prisons, I see these people shivering and begging me for help. But they are treated as if they are robbers, they are rapists and they are terrorists. These people are minor drug offenders who do not deserve this treatment. And I implore this House to open your eyes to the monstrosity that we as a state and in many countries have condoned over the decades today. That is why my proposal to you before this August House is that minor drug offenders who are dependent on drugs should never go to the ironclad miseries of prison, but should be embraced by the warmth of the state who is willing to give them voluntary treatment. What do I mean by voluntary treatment? Voluntary treatment is basically methadone substitution therapies or effective drug rehabilitative therapies that are able to tackle the addiction that these people face but also be able to provide a smooth transition from them from drug dependency to a normal society, normal citizen and society later. I'm going to talk to you about three things in today's motion. Firstly, on the irreversibly abusive consequences when these persons are put to jail. Secondly, the disproportionately damaging effect towards the lowest common denominators or denominators of society if we condone the current policy. And thirdly, how, how, how current status quo it provides a barrier towards safe drug treatments towards these addicts today. Let's go on to the first point, irreversible abusive consequences in prison. When these minor drug offenders go to jail, they face disastrous consequences. Firstly, there is no adequate and proper drug rehab treatment within these jails. We think that it's a violation of Article 13 of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, where it denies someone the right to health, we deny someone the right to get their proper and adequate treatment. Jails don't provide this. They provide you a cell where you're able to rot and read books for the rest of your two to three years. B. Going to jail also exposes you to the violent criminal gangs and the manner kind of misdeeds that happen and fester within these jails. That is why the rate of recidivism is so high when Cato Institute indicated to us that there's a 60% rate of recidivism whenever a person goes to jail. So these drug addicts who are normally minor offenders are going to come out from the system to become hardcore criminals later merely because you force them to mix with the wrong crowd. Thirdly, Stigmatization. When you go to jail, especially when you are merely a young offender, an 18, 19 year old that still has a future ahead of him, that could still come to Budapest here to participate in such a prestigious global debate tournament, you'll be denied the kind of right to self-actualize because you have a criminal record. I know of friends who are smart people who just happen to make a mistake to courier drugs, but necessarily they are faced imprisonment, they are denied jobs or opportunities, universities don't even pay attention to them. Second point, disproportionately affects lowest common denominator in society. Who are these persons that we are incarcerating? These are not drug lords or kingpins who are involved in mass propagation. These are the lowest common denominator in society, the social economically vulnerable, the poor, the young people. In Malaysia, there's a boy named Yong Gui Kong from Sabah. He was caught for drug possession in Singapore and he was sentenced to the death penalty. He actually became a better person in prison. He read the Bible, he promised to propagate good drug maintenance and policies, he advocated the youth to stay away from drugs, but he was denied any form of redress. He was, he was paid to put the same treatment as a drug lord and as a drug offender. We are also talking about racial minorities here. African Americans are only 12% of the US population, that are, but they comprise of 50% of drug offenders in the United States. It creates this kind of racial tension when the state is bearing its overwhelming authority to clamp down towards a racial minority. This is not a good policy. Thirdly, why this is a barrier towards safe drug treatments? Because if you criminalize it, if you say that you will go to jail, it's a stigmatization towards these people. They will not want to receive help for antiretroviral treatment. That is why blood-borne diseases like HIV and hepatitis C are prevalent. 
Lancet reported that there's a 19% increase in this kind of bloodborne diseases in Ukraine because precisely because the criminalization is so rampant there. People are fearful to go to the authorities. They go to the back alleys. They share, they share syringes with people. And that's where these diseases like HIV spread. And that's why society festers and crumbles in the end of the day. How do we change this by giving them voluntary treatment? We think we provide them a better alternative. We provide them a safe environment where they are able to get the kind, they are able to treat their drug addiction. They do not need to suffer. We respect their human rights and we treat them as human beings. Those who are patients who need help, help necessarily, and not violent criminals that is that should be put in jail necessarily. These are people who we should respect as basic human beings who just made a mistake in life, who never harm others. They should deserve a second chance. In summary, what have I told you today? Firstly, I've told you of the missing problem and the, of the drug policy that we have today. I've told to you firstly on the irreversibly abusive consequences of imprisonment, the disproportionate effect towards the most poor and the most racially minority of our population. And thirdly, I've told to you how this is a barrier towards getting more and more effective treatments in the future, where they are denied the kind of effective treatment precisely because of the rampant stigmatization that happens. Mr. Speaker, essentially, I appeal to you that essentially we do not want people to be put behind bars, we want them to be put behind hospitals, supervision of the state. As we stand before this opulent structure today talking about drug policy and sort, we do not recognize that there are many people who are marginalized, who are poor out there, who need help. And those are the people who should pay attention to. The stats and the figures support my proposition. But I open to you and I plead to you to open your heart and to look around these people around you that they also deserve a second chance in life. They are not rampant criminals that are put behind bars. They are people who need help and the state should be that security and protector into giving them adequate healthcare instead of someone that tracks them down and bullies them. Thank you.